In this demo, I'm going to be having a look at NWAR 6221, the part two of the POE, how to configure the routing. So <clears throat> on this screen, you can see that in my virtual computer, in my Zero lab, I've got a server that is installed. The first server is called server 2016 PTA, and the next server is my Johannesburg server. So mine is called Windows Server 2016. Now, <clears throat> for each of these servers, they have two network cards. So how do I check if I've got two network cards? I go into my Hyper-V manager. From Hyper-V manager, I click on the server, and then on the right-hand side, I go to the server settings. And I can see I've got network adapter and two network adapters. One network adapter is connected to the Joburg LAN, and the next network adapter is connected to the PTA. Uh, this should be PTA, but I see I've got PTN the WAN. So how did we uh, set up the switches again? Let's just go and have a look. On the top right-hand side of Hyper-V, we went to Virtual Switch Manager, and then we clicked on the type of virtual switch that we wanted to create. Here you can see we've created Joburg LAN that is uh, connected to a private network. Joburg Pretoria, which is the WAN, is connected to internal only. And then the PTA LAN is on a private virtual switch. So to create a new switch, I can simply click on new. And then I click on this type of switch that I want. If I wanted a private switch, I'll click on it. And then I'll say create switch. You'll say it's created the switch here. And then you type in the name here and then you say apply and OK. I don't need this additional switch, so I'm just going to remove it. That's how I created the three virtual, uh, the, the three virtual switches that I required. How to ensure that I've got two network cards on each of the servers? I click on the server in the Hyper-V manager, and then I go to its settings. And then I can see that I've got two network adapters here. If you don't have uh, two network adapters, you click on Add Hardware, Network Adapter, click on Add. And then you'll see it's got a new network adapter that has been created now, and it says it's not connected. I'm going to then connect this to one of the switches. And then when I've done that, I'm going to say Apply and OK. Now, I don't need this additional switch. This was just for a demo, so I'm going to remove it. <clears throat> going into my servers now, I've got two servers that were installed. <clears throat> this is my Pretoria server. So for my Pretoria server, I went and installed routing and remote access. Again, how to install routing and remote access? I went into Server Manager. From Server Manager, I went to Add Roles and Features. And then I selected Remote Access. There's it here, Remote Access. So that's how I installed Routing and Remote Access on both of my servers. So as you can see, there's my two servers here. <clears throat> On the first server, now I've got routing and remote access that has been installed, and you can see it's been configured. To configure routing and remote access, you simply right click, and you click here that says configure routing and remote access. You can then go to custom configuration and just configure your LAN routing. So you only need LAN routing for this example. Once you've configured it, you will see that it will start. And then you've got, um, 
your routing service that needs to be running. So you, it indicates a green tick here. So that indicates that my service is up and running. So I can start, stop and restart here, the routing service. So we've got our two servers now. On the first server, I need to go into my network sharing and cent, uh, uh, network and sharing center. So this one here is my PTA server, Pretoria server. So I'm going to open my network and sharing center. I'm just going to make this more clear because I've got Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. So I'm going to click on my um, Ethernet close. I want to go to these network connections. Um, I'm going to click on change adapter settings. And then I'm going to right click on this one and I'm going to rename it. This is my PTA LAN. And this one is connected to the PTA JHB WAN. So let me just rename that one. PTA JHB LAN. <clears throat> so if I look at the properties now of the private network, I'm going to set its IP address. This one I've set to 192.168.20.249 according to what I calculated, okay? And then I've just left the default gateway blank and the preferred DNS server is the same server's IP address. So that's my private IP address. Then I will also set a public IP address. So properties here, IP version four on the public. Now for the public network, I've set a public IP address of 200.10.20.10. .10. So for the Pretoria server, I've got 200.10.20.10. .10 .10. That's a private IP address that I'm, uh, sorry, that's a public IP address that I'm using. So this WAN is connected to the <coughs> other server here. So let's also open up the network and sharing center on this server. Let me just rename this one as well, change the adapter settings. And on this one, I'm going to rename it to JHB LAN, JHB underscore LAN, and then this adapter here is connected to JHB PTA LAN. Uh, sorry, it should, should be WAN, so I must rename that other one. So JHB underscore PTA, this should be WAN. This is my WAN connection a wide area connection. So let me just go and rename this one. That one should be WAN. So my WAN <coughs> should have the same, um, should have, should be on the same uh, wide area network. So let's look at the properties of this one. The IP address here, what have I set it to? 200.10.20.30. So they are on the same network. 200.10.20 is the network ID. This server is .30 and this server is .10. Okay. 
So if I need to test now, can they communicate? Remember also in your network and sharing center, in your network and sharing center for your advanced sharing settings, you need to ensure that both of them have got network discovery that's turned on. Now, I'm just going to test if I can communicate. So if I look at the general routes that have been configured here, and then also here, IP version four. So it tells me that this server's here is um, let's just refresh that checkpoint now that's to refresh okay can you see after I renamed it it's got the correct adapter settings let's just do that here as well we'll just refresh there's the correct adapter settings here, the interfaces. <clears throat> now this one, <clears throat> the WAN is connected to 200.10.20.10. Here the WAN is also 210.20.30. So these two should be able to communicate now using the WAN connection. So if I ping each other, let me open up a command prompt here. And from this server, I'm going to ping the WAN connection, which is 200.10.20.10. So I can see, yes, I'm getting a reply. It can communicate. Now I want to see, can this a server, the Joburg server, communicate with the PTA LAN, which is ping 192.168.20.249. So now it says destination host unreachable. What does it mean? It means that it cannot communicate with the PTA LAN. How do I configure it now to communicate with that PTA LAN? I need to set up a static route, as they have said. So I will go to static router here, and I'll say right click, new static route. And which interface must I use? I'm going to click on the drop down, and I'm going to select the PTA WAN interface. For the WAN interface, I want to go to which network? I want to go to 192.168.20. So I'm going to type in 192.168.20.0. That's the name of the network. The mask is going to be 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
um, this server is acting as a router. So I go now and I'll check on my um, command prompt. Can I reach now that server? So I'm going to type ping 192.168.20.249. And what does it say now? I'm getting a reply. Can you see? So first time it showed me destination host is unreachable. Now it says I get a reply from that address, 249. I can do the same thing on this server. So if I look at this server now, I'm going to try to communicate. This server, the Joba LAN is 192.168.10.209. So from my PTA server, I'm also going to open up a command prompt. And I'm going to try to communicate with ping 192.168.10.209. That's the Joburg land. So I can see when I try to communicate with that land, it says destination host unreachable. So it means that routing is not configured. So I need to go and set up a static route and I go here to static routes now and I say new static route. Where do I want to go? Firstly, I check that the correct interface is selected. So it's selected here, which interface? My WAN interface is selected. Then which network do I want to get to? I want to get to 192.168.10 network, so dot zero. What is the network mask? It's also going to be 255.255.255.0. And the gateway that I need to use is this server here, which is the um, Joburg server. So the Joburg server, its IP address is 200.10.20.0. And then I say, OK. And it says, OK, if I need to get to the 192.168.10 network, I need to go to the server called 200.10.20.30. And that's going to give me access to that network. Let me go back to my command prompt. And now let's see if I can reach that server that I was looking for. And there you go, you get a reply. Can you see? After configuring the static route. So now you have proved that both the servers are configured for routing and I can reach the Pretoria server from the Pretoria network from the Joburg server and I can reach the the Joburg network from the Pretoria server. And this is how we have configured routing and remote access or the routing that's required for part two of NWAR 6221.